Hey guys, today's video is about calibration. So a lot of people are feared out there about calibration and the, their results and you know if they're correct or not and they're checking things against um, their own tests, which is absolutely fine. Um, and the question is, was raised about how we calibrate our machines and how we do this and that. We actually um, do that very straightforward. I've written a, um, a, a PDF, like I think 16, nah, I think like 14 years ago, I wrote a PDF about that, where it's actually everything is um, mentioned and explained. Uh, but back then, nobody was caring about it because we were the only ones having an ICP and nobody was knowing about calibration or LODs or whatever. So that still is available. I'll put it in the links below so you can have a look at it. It's not like, you know, recent, but it's still something that we typically do. So we do a calibration on our machines every day, calibration, recalibration, standardization. There is something that is called standardization. I can explain that to you too. Um, and it's a very straightforward way to do it. So normally every lab is doing it the way we do it. Um, we matrix match, that means that we have our calibration fluids in seawater to make them match the matrix, so your seawater. If there would be in fresh water, you would have issues, you know, you have lower LODs that in the reality you would measure. Um, we use certified standards, so it's, uh, let me check if I get you one here. So that is a certified standard, right? They're packed like that, so they don't like get too much light, but it's a certified standard for, in this case, iodine, iodine standard. Um, and they come with stuff like that. This is the certification for one of them. So this is a certification, I think, for another one, where you can see that. Here you go. So the camera can't see me. Um, yeah, and they come in these uh, little boxes and you use them to get a standard going for seawater. Either you have a mixed version, we have also a big mixed version of it that we let a big company produce. Um, and again, like if you have questions, just write them down here. I can give you all the, um, you know, all, all the data about the company that produced them for us. And they're all high lab grade companies and one of these standards costs us around 500 euros, right? But you can use them actually quite often and you need them. You need them to calibrate the machine. You need them to check the machine from time to time if everything is fine. And that's what we actually developed quality wise. Uh, 16 years ago. So we're doing that for a long, long time this way and it works really well for our customers and it works really well for me because I'm the last one checking these results before I upload them. So you need to understand one thing though, calibration is very easy, very straightforward. You, you just put, you know, the calibration liquids in one line. You don't have one calibration liquid for an uh, element. You have like five. And so even if one of them is off, you will see it on the other, um, four um, and then you can take that one actually out if you want and use the other four as a calibrated system there's a lot of things that that are just straightforward and if the calibration is off it will cause you a very like you know uncritical error we call this error a standard error so it means that your tested samples will always show you the same error so if you have a calibration failed for example on iodine um, all tests that follow will actually show you, let's say, higher or lower iodine, right? And because we test every fourth sample, like four samples and then every fifth sample will be a standard calibration standard or seawater standard, then you actually can confirm if anything like that happens, right? So we do that. We have um, every fourth sample, I'll show you in a sec um, when I take you with me. Um, every fourth sample that we, or every fifth sample where we measure four samples um, unknown, so that's your samples, and one will be a known sample to every time re standardize that machine, right? So we actually do not one calibration a day, we do 16 or something, okay? But like I say, if you're worried about errors, you can ask me. There is another error I will do a video about so you understand it. Um, is a fluctuative error. So this error will just appear in one of the tests out of 10, right? And then there's other things you need to do to be able to detect these errors, right? And that's a very human thing. So the machine can't do it. And like I say, I'm the last person looking, watching over this um, results all over the world, even in Brazil, in um, America, 
in the UK, in, um, you know, in Germany, all of these machines will give me their results and I will go through them, look at them and upload them. It's not only for quality control, it's also for me to be linked to these results a bit more to understand what the issues are in the different regions. But it also helps to quality control if there is any kind of issue with the samples to run our protocol. I can um, execute a protocol that will test your spare sample, um, stuff like that. So it's, it's quite a big machinery behind it, but it's not that complicated. So it's very explainable and I will, I will do that in the next videos coming up, but you know, calibration is really not a big issue. Let me take you and show you uh, what I mean with every fourth sample. I hope this thing will do it with me. Here we are on one of the racks, like I promised you, and you can see a little um, row up of tests that we have here. So the first two are walls that are not um, marked with a barcode. That's the standard walls that we use, right? So the first two, okay? And then when you go further, you have one, two, three, four. That's the fourth one and it has, see, had a barcode. And then the next one will have no barcode again. So that's again one of the standards to standardize the machine, to recalibrate the machine. And then you go one, two, three, four. So that would be one with a barcode. Let's see, here you go. And the last one, which is the fifth sample, again, will have no barcode. Okay, so this is ongoing like that. And that's the way we secure our machines testing correctly and we can match it against all the standards and um, of, like obviously the certified standards every time.